Hello, welcome again to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in the last tutorial, actually the last tutorial I recorded, I accidentally del deleted it, so uh, I have to do it over again. I sort of forgot what I did, but I think I still have it fresh in my mind. Uh, okay, so the first thing we did was I fixed, uh, if you didn't notice, th this wasn't here, this wasn't here. Uh, right here this thing it gave us an error and the way I fixed that was I put static in front of the camera so uh, yeah just put the word static in front of where you declare a camera and next thing I did was I created a new cursor uh, or I just made it static basically and I put this little method here that returns the cursors position uh, I made the cursor update and draw and load its content so just make sure you put a you, uh, cursor dot load content cursor dot update cursor dot draw in between a new sprite batch begin and end and that would be good right there uh, next thing I did was I went to into the items class and there used to be an object dot add and it said new cursor so I uh, got rid of that line because we don't want to be in the object list uh, next thing I did was I went into uh, where is it man I went into uh, the man class and where is it uh, right here where it says rotation equals point direction it used to be uh, position dot x and position dot y but this is what I did I made it camera dot global to local and I put position as an argument and I put dot x I, oops I did the same thing with y and I don't think I explained in the last tutorial what, what global to local is so I'll explain it now I made these uh, functions or methods called global to local and local to global and what they basically do is uh, they 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 translate different positions uh, from relative to the screen to relative to the map. So let's say our screen is 48 by 64 pixels big. And the top left of, left of our screen, not our map, is 0 by 0. And our mouse position, which is always given to relative to the, to the screen, is like... Uh, 60 by 60. Uh, so what we want to do there is we want to get a value. Let's say we want to click on the screen and we want uh, something to appear on the map. But if we move the camera around, uh, it's going to appear on the top left of the map. So if we move the camera way down to the bottom right of the map and we click there, uh, it's going to create something all the way to the top left of the map and we don't want that so it basically just translates those positions you can go look at it and see it's pretty simple uh, so that's what that does uh, I think I went over everything so the reason we're doing that uh, on the man is because we're going to try to uh, we're getting the position of the man which is global or is the position of the man is relative to the map and we want and the mouse is relative to the screen so uh, we got the man's position and got his position relative to the screen and comparing it with a mouse's position relative to the screen so uh, both of them are on the same level so that's basically what that does and then uh, again we made a new sprite batch that's not affected by the camera matrix or the camera dot transform matrix so we create a new sprite batch that draws on top of that and since we have extra time I'm just gonna go over here and right click and go to add new class and I'm gonna name this class HUD H U D all caps uh, you don't have to do this but this is just the way I like to do things and I'm just going to make one big uh, method called public draw. Oh yeah, I noticed some of you guys uh, 
<clears throat> it looks like some of you guys do not know C Sharp. Uh, some of you have been messaging me uh, errors and stuff, and they're sort of silly. Uh, like, sometimes people forget to put a data type on their methods, which shows me that a lot of some people watching these videos do not know the language yet. So what I would suggest to people who are not comfortable with a language language uh, is that they go watch some uh, C sharp tutorials get comfortable with the language and come back to these videos uh, or if you want to follow along in these videos and try to get used to it here that's also uh, possible but it might just be easier if you go watch uh, a C sharp tutorial specifically for people learning to learning C sharp so uh, yeah, if you, if you want me to create C sharp tutorials, I might do that in the future if people ask me. But uh, sort of boring though. Uh, games are sort of more fun to make. So moving on. Anyways, so we're creating a draw method, and what we're gonna basically do is go to our man class, and where we're drawing everything, I'm just gonna cut all this out and paste it here. Okay, and as you can see, I'm getting a lot of errors, and that's because we haven't imported the namespaces, the XNA namespaces, so just copy all of those, paste them in there, paste all the using statements, and most of our error, errors should go away. And we're going to make some of these variables public. So let's see, uh, what do we need? We need our max. Oh yeah, we have to actually make put an argument here. So just put sprite batch, sprite batch. There we go. So I should take care of that. And then we need our reloading variable, ammo variable, HP variable, and max HP. So go to our man, and we're going to go to our rela reloading boolean and just make that public. We go to our health, make that public. Go to our max HP public. You can also make uh, getters and setters or properties for these if you want. I'm just making these public just because I'm sort of lazy. Uh, okay, so actually we still need the ammo variable. Okay, I think we might need max ammo too just to be safe. So next thing we want to do is replace this with hobo. Oh, oops, that's another game. Sorry. Uh, man dot man dot reloading okay so basically just put man dot man in front of all the variables that uh, it's not recognizing and most of the errors should go away uh, just a second it's not recognizing max HP uh, okay so let's go back to our man class go to our max HP and I'm just gonna make this a public static so we can just do that and that should take care of everything uh, so next thing we want to do is we can actually get rid of our whole draw override draw override method so just erase that whole thing because it's not doing anything really and we can go back to our game class and uh, what we want to do is we want to update or actually we want to draw the HUD so we want to draw the HUD not relative to the, to the camera's position we want it to draw it just like how the cursor is uh, on top of the camera of the image the camera is getting so we're gonna draw it actually below the cursor so I'm just gonna say sorry I'm gonna make the static actually because uh, that's the only method we need to use in HUD. I don't think there's anything else. Actually, never mind. We might have to put a load content in there. But, uh, hmm. but we don't have to do that now. So go ahead and press HUD dot. Oops. HUD dot draw and put in sprite. Oops. Sprite batch. That should take care of things. Okay, 
So go ahead and run it. Okay, let's see. Psh, 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 psh. Cannot be marked as static for some reason. Okay, that is curious. Okay, there we go. So just get rid of that static. Uh, for, basically, if it's a constant, it's basically saying it's a uh, static too. So just forgot about that. Oh, if you notice, I also changed the rate of fire because it just looks cooler that way. So as you can see, our HUD is following with our screen. Our mouse is working. When we move, the camera follows our screen. Everything's work working perfectly. Our collision's still working. It's running a little slow. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you for joining us in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we might be going over XML-based uh, objects where it'll read the XML and then paste all the objects instead of us having to manually put it in here. And then we'll also go over uh, items database, maybe, and also, uh, what else? performance issues because it's, it is running a little bit slow and that's probably because we're creating lots of threads and running them at the same time for the pathfinding so we're going to uh, optimize the performance in future tutorials so uh, thank you for watching uh, please leave a rating comment subscribe and I hope to see you in the next tutorial thank you bye